Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to take a look at adding metadata to some pictures in Photo Mechanic. And we're going to pay particular attention to the fields that drive the new features in Google Images. This isn't by any stretch of the imagination going to be a deep dive into working with Photo Mechanic and metadata. There are actually quite a few Photo Mechanic videos on this channel. And you can refer to those for all of the nitty gritty. Now, adding metadata to your pictures has always been important, but some new developments in the last year or so, some things that are really good news, make it even more important right now. First up, for a couple of years now, Google Images has actually supported three of the IPTC metadata fields about your copyright and your identity. But this spring, in the spring of 2020, Google moved that information from being hidden down below a sort of inconspicuous link to right here, right on the front of the preview page for an image. It's right up front, right where everybody can see it. And this, I think, is a really important thing for photographers. Anybody looking for pictures in Google Images cannot help but see and understand who made a picture and to whom that picture belongs. And for an honest person, that's really great news right there, because that person can now go ahead and contact you and ask for permission, and if the situation is that way, pay a license fee to use your picture. That is pretty terrific right in and of itself. And if we look right here, we can see they've labeled the fields that they're using. We can see what, what they're doing. Here's the creator field. That's you, the photographer. And in this particular picture, it says Melissa Renwick. This is a picture of Greta Thunberg doing something. And we can see that the copyright for this picture belongs to the Canadian press. And I would actually recommend adding some rudimentary contact information right here in your copyright field. Why make somebody look it up? Put your phone number right here. It's a great opportunity. And here we have the credit field. The credit field is sort of an interesting field. It's pretty seriously misunderstood. Most photographers probably don't even need to fool around with it. What the credit field is, is best explained by example rather than anything else. The credit field is the organization that is responsible for the distribution of a picture or perhaps responsible for the picture itself. It is not necessarily the organization that owns it. It's who you're working for. If you see a credit that says Tyler Hicks, the New York Times, the New York Times is what goes in the credit field. Here in this particular case, this picture, it looks like it came from the NBC News site. NBC News, I'm sure, is a member of the Associated Press. They got the picture from the Associated Press. The picture actually belongs to the Canadian Press, who lent it to AP in a content sharing arrangement. The credit field isn't even immutable, as we can see here. Originally, for this picture, it would have been credited to the Canadian press. And in this particular case, it's credited to somebody else. So that's a bit confusing. And in your case, hey, it probably doesn't even matter. But now Google Images has added yet another metadata-driven, copyright-related feature that's a great benefit to photographers. Here we are at a Google Handout picture of their new licensable feature. Now, this feature in Google Images is still in beta. This thing is not live yet. And for several months now, people in the industry have been looking at this handout picture from Google that shows how the thing is supposed to look. It won't necessarily look exactly like this by the time it comes out. By the time you watch this video, it's entirely possible that this thing will be released into the market and we will know if I'm right or wrong, about how it's supposed to look. Anyway, the point is that you can have a badge like this appear on your thumbnails in Google Images if you want it. The badge says licensable, and people can click through the badge, and they can be put directly in touch with you. Moreover, if you configure your metadata correctly, you can have a specific click-through for the particular picture, an e-commerce page, where somebody can buy the picture directly, which would be great if you're a photo agency or something like that. We're just humble photographers. We can use that feature and we can use the, the link, 
but we won't be quite as specific about it. Now, this feature can be driven by IPTC metadata that you can very simply include in your photos. In fact, this is templated at metadata. This is part of the standing metadata that you apply at the beginning of the process of marking up photos. You might even do it automatically, literally, without even lifting a finger. This is not heavy lifting, folks. This metadata can also be driven by specific structured markup on a web page, which is not something that photographers probably need worry about very often. That's more in heavy-duty web developer territory. So let's go ahead and mark up some pictures. And when we get there, we'll talk about making this Google thing work. Okay, so we're back looking at Photo Mechanic. I'll click on it. Make the title bar actually say Photo Mechanic. And you'll notice straight off probably that my copy of Photo Mechanic doesn't look exactly like your copy. Photo Mechanic is very configurable. I use the thing every single day. So I've configured my Photo Mechanic to work the way I want it to work. Once upon a time, before I recorded videos about Photo Mechanic, I went to pretty great effort to try to return my copy to a default condition so that it would look like everybody else's Photo Mechanic. Frankly, I've reconfigured my Photo Mechanic enough times over the years that I'm not even sure what the default condition even looks like anymore, so I just kind of don't do that. Now, mind you, Photo Mechanic works perfectly fine right out of the box. It's developed by very bright people who know what they're doing, and the default configuration is actually terrific. And most people who use Photo Mechanic, including me for years, never touch the default configuration. As I go along here, I'll talk about where my configuration probably doesn't match yours, and we'll try to cover that. You'll also notice in the title bar that my Photo Mechanic is Photo Mechanic Plus. Photo Mechanic Plus is not really even a product yet. It's in beta. It's a digital asset management enabled version of Photo Mechanic. It's essentially a DAM program and Photo Mechanic put together. When used as ordinary Photo Mechanic, it looks exactly the same as regular Photo Mechanic. Again, by the time you watch this video, it's entirely possible that Photo Mechanic Plus has actually been released and is available on the market. And frankly, folks, I really like it when that happens. I think that's going to be a good thing. So let's take a look here. We have a folder full of test images. And this is a series of videos. I'm doing a video similar to this one in a whole bunch of different sorts of software so that people can glean an understanding of what it's like to do metadata markup in the software that they're likely to use. So we have this folder of demo images that we dug up from our garden somehow. Let's go ahead and apply metadata to them. Now, this is not the only way to do this by any stretch of the imagination. Photo Mechanic, even amongst the programs that I cover, is extremely flexible. There's a lot of ways to do this. But hey, this will work, so let's just go right through it. Let's just select all these photos that are in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and call my template dialog. I'm going to do it with Command or Control-I on the keyboard, but you could also go to the Image pull down in Photo Mechanic's main menu and call the metadata IPTC template. And I'm going to load a template here. And this is one of our Joe Photographer sample templates that we use in a lot of demos. And in fact, I'll put a link in the description down below so that you can download this template and you can simply turn it into a template for yourself by following along and changing Joe Photographer's information to your information. Joe Photographer obviously doesn't exist. He is our imaginary photographer. He and his sister Susie, sometimes we use the Susie Photographer template. Anyhow, this template has all of Joe's standing information on it, and we can just apply it to these photos in one go by clicking Apply Template to Selected. And there we are. Now we have all the standing information for all of these photos applied just like that. So now we can go back to these photos and go ahead and caption them. So let's go to this photo, for example, and now we'll pull up the one at a time IPTC metadata editor for Photo Mechanic. And I have a video, it's actually my most recent Photo Mechanic video, that explains in detail when to use either one of these editor dialogues. But to oversimplify, if you're doing metadata on pictures that don't have any metadata, 
either one will work just fine. You'll find very obviously and very quickly that the template dialog works with multiple pictures, and this one is a one at a time sort of thing. But we'll just go ahead and use this one, and we'll go ahead and caption some pictures. This is an orchid. So, hey, let's make a caption that just simply says it's an orchid. And we could do some keywords too. We'll okay it, and it's fine. And then we'll move on to the next picture. So here we have two pictures that are a pair. This is a raw photo. And this is an edited, exported version of the same photo. Obviously, these two photos are going to require the same caption information. So we're going to do them as a pair. It could be a pair. It could be a dozen photos. If you've done a portrait of somebody, the chances are really, really good that you can't come up with unique and individual captions for each and every one, even if that might be a good thing for SEO. It's just not practical. And besides which, it's a bunch of extra work. So we're going to go back to our template editor for these particular photos, and we're going to do our caption right here. And there's a number of ways to do this, but I'll do it this way because it kind of is best practice. I'll go ahead and clear my template editor. I'll go to the caption field, and I will set replace to prefix and what this is going to do is allow me to write around the information that I've already put in this photo. Frankly, honestly, as long as I have this template selected, I could go ahead and write over it anyway, because the only information on these particular photos at this particular instant is information from the template. But anyway, this picture is a rain lily. So let's say a rain lily blooms after a shower. Okay, fine. It's not the world's greatest caption, but it'll do. Photo Mechanic is going to go ahead and put that in front of anything else that already exists in the caption field, which in this particular case is Joe Photographer's inline byline that says photo by Joe Photographer. And we can come down here into the keywords field and we can add a keyword. For the sake of our argument, let's just say that flowers is a nice keyword. And you'll notice here that our keywords field is turned on, check mark there. And here we have a check mark by this little plus sign. And what that's going to do is that's going to append this flowers keyword to any other keywords that happen to be there, maybe keywords that were put there by the template. In any case, this means that we can safely work around any other information that may already be in our pictures. So we'll apply to selected, and boom, we can see here that our rain lily caption is here, including Joe Photographer's inline byline. And we added that keyword, and that's fine. And we'll move ahead to the other picture, and we'll see that we've done the same thing. Okay, rinse and repeat. Now, do you have to do it in two separate steps? Mark up every picture with the template, and then go back and do captions individually or in small groups? Could you do it all in one go? Just bring up a picture? like this one, bring up the one at a time metadata editor, apply your template, and then go from there. Watering the garden. Absolutely, trust me folks, this is not a tutorial on writing good captions. I'm just trying to make you suffer the least amount possible through my terrible typing. And then we can move on. Now, something that we really, really need to stress about doing this work with captions and metadata is use your template. Don't ever fall victim to the temptation to individually type all that repetitive information that's the same on every picture, your name, your phone number, your URL, the information that we're going to need for the Google fields, over and over again. For one thing, that would just be a horrible waste of time. And for another thing, it just absolutely doesn't work. Human beings cannot type repetitive information tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of times and get it right every time. So have a template and use your template every single time. That is a really important piece of advice. That's maybe the most important piece of metadata advice that I can give you. Now, let's take a look at what's in this template and how this Google stuff works. So we'll just open this one up, and we can see that we have our normal stuff. Now, we put a caption here, but the template actually had some information for our caption field. It had Joe Photographer's initials. 
in the field that describes who wrote the caption. Okay, that's going to be the same for every picture that Joe Photographer does. We have Joe Photographer's name. We have Joe Photographer's copyright notice. This particular one's a little stale. It's 2018, but when you update this template for your own use, feel free to update that. And as a matter of fact, I have a blog post that shows you how to automate that so that Photo Mechanic will put the year in for you, which is a tremendous thing, because if you're like me, you think about changing the year probably in about the middle of February. So we have Joe Photographer's contact URL. We have a rights usage terms statement from Joe Photographer. I kind of like that field, but I have to warn you that not all software that reads metadata reads it. In this particular template, Joe has actually included a credit. Joe and Susie Studio, or Susie and Joe Studio, I'm sorry. That's kind of cool. If in fact you actually have a studio or you're working for a client, let's say you're working for Widget Co. or maybe in the more likely circumstance you're working for my favorite imaginary PR agency, Awesome PR, and the photo is going to be distributed on behalf of Widget Co., in which case the credit would be Widget Co. And I should warn you here that many people and some companies nowadays in 2020 want to put their whole byline string, their whole credit line string in the credit field. And IPTC has even given its tacit approval for this. The official name of the field in 2020 is credit line. So here we would have photo by Joe photographer slash or dash or something, Joe and Susie studio, make that Susie and Joe studio. And I don't think that's best practice at all. For one thing, it's conflating two different pieces of metadata, who created the picture and who's responsible for the picture, and putting them in the same field. Think about when you've used a contact program or an office program, and first names and last names are stuck in the same field, and you have to figure out how to deal with that mess. Moreover, an automated system that publishes this photo is very likely to create the byline by taking the contents of the creator field and concatenating it with the contents of the credit field with a slash or a dash or something in between. So if you have your entire credit string in this field and that happens, you're going to get a crazy credit line that has your name twice and a bunch of slashes and whatever. So if you do use the credit, don't fall victim to the temptation to try to put your whole byline in it. Otherwise, in this template, we have space holders in the city, state, and province, and country fields. You'll probably just want to delete those for your own version. And then we have a section of contact information. Now, again, the order of these fields and the way this looks in the interface, this is one of the cases where I've customized Photo Mechanic. Yours won't look like this. You can make yours look however you want it to look. Anyhow, here we have Joe's contact information. That is obviously going to say the same for every picture that Joe puts out. And by the way, we have a space here for a physical address, a space for an email address, a space for phone numbers, and a space for a contact URL. You might not want to do all of those. I know photographers who dutifully fill in every single one of those things. Because if someone wants to get in touch with them, to give them money for a license, they absolutely want to make it as easy as possible. Frankly, I'm a little worried about being spammed, so I don't put my email address in my template. I have my business phone number in most of my templates, and in all of them, I have the URL of my website. So let's jump up here into this section of the interface as I have it arranged and look at copyright information. Here's Joe's copyright statement. Copyright symbol, copyright this year, Joe Photographer, and he's put his business phone number in there. I personally recommend this. I think this is a great idea. Put some rudimentary contact information right here in your copyright field, because your copyright field is a field that people are very likely to see if they want to know who the picture belongs to. And as we saw, this is a field that Google is going to show them. It's going to be right up front, right in their face. And if indeed you're in a position where you want to be able to grant people permission to use your photos with or without collecting money from them, that's entirely up to you, you want to make it really easy for them to get in touch with you. So this is a field that we've already seen shows up in Google Images right in the front. 
along with the creator field, which is your name. Okay, fine. That's perfectly simple. And if you use it, and most of us probably will not, we have the credit field. And now we have this, the copyright URL field. Officially in IPTC terms, this field is called the Web Statement of Rights. And if you have a serviceable, fully qualified URL in this field, you will not only get your licensable badge, but your licensable badge will click through to the address in this field. Now, Joe Photographer here, when I made this sample template for Joe, didn't put his fully qualified URL. According to Google's documentation, for this to work properly, you need to do the whole URL, including the protocol. So HTTPS colon slash slash www dot, if in fact that's part of your URL, joephotographer.com. And just for the sake of it, let's go to a certain page on Joe's website called Licenses. There you go. So now we have our licensable badge. There it is, the badge. We've got it. We're most of the way there. Now here, I suggested that Joe direct people who are interested in his pictures to a specific page for licenses. Now, if you read the technical documentation behind the Web Statement of Rights field, which pretty much everybody calls in their software the copyright URL field, it says that there's supposed to be license information on it. And some people interpret that to mean a technical recitation of the license that you might offer somebody for this particular picture. I don't think we even slightly have to go there because, let's face it, folks, we do not want to have to do this individually for each and every picture. And at the time we make a picture and put metadata on it, we have actually no idea what sort of license might be available at some future time when somebody dredges it up out of Google Images and gives us a call. So what I have done, and I'll recommend this for you too, is I've made a landing page on my website for licenses. And it's pretty darn simple. I mean, we're talking here about 15 minutes worth of work, probably, most of which was finding the banner-shaped image to go under the word licenses. Bang! It tells you that this picture is all rights reserved. We don't have to be 100% here, but about 99% of the time in my case, yeah, that's exactly right. It's all rights reserved. And it says, you want to publish the photo? Just get in touch and we'll work something out. There's a contact link, and it's the contact link from my website. If that doesn't work for you, by all means, feel free to call me up on my business telephone. Now, when somebody calls, it's entirely possible that I might be in the sort of mood where I say, hey, you're an honest person. Sure, you can have a license for free. Or it may be a case where it's an editorial use, and I refer them to the very nice people at my agency. They can work it out. Maybe I can sell them a license. Maybe there is no license available. Maybe this picture's already been bought out or something like that. No problem. No blood, no foul. You contact me. If that's the case, I'll just tell you. Now, a very few of my pictures are licensed under Creative Commons. I have a separate license page for Creative Commons pictures. Talked about that in a different video. And then there's just a paragraph here where I thank people for coming, for being an honest person, which is really terrific. And that's what we're working towards with all this metadata stuff and with these wonderful developments on Google. So I think that's a kind of a big deal. And I think that kind of makes a difference. And by the way, for this to work properly, for you to get that link on Google, there are a couple of conditions that have to be met. For one thing, you have to put the metadata on your picture. For a second thing, the metadata still has to be on your picture by the time Google gets to it. What that means is that whatever website publishes your picture, which could very well be your own, has to not destroy your metadata. And that is and has been a really big problem. But that's another piece of good news because in the last couple of years, millions of websites that used to destroy metadata have made the socially conscious move to not do it anymore. 
Now that includes, of course, most of the photographer-oriented websites, photo sharing and portfolio sites like Photoshelter or SmugMug or Zenfolio. And most recently, the photo-oriented web hosting service Squarespace has made changes to their programming so they support metadata. And if you have a website, I urge you to look into the matter, find out if your website is supporting metadata or destroying it, and if it's the latter, take the steps to fix that. And there is a lot in my blog about how to do this. And for most people with websites, I guess I can go ahead and say that. So yeah, probably for 50% plus one of the websites out there in the world, if they are destroying metadata, it's a very quick and easy fix to fix it. It probably just means calling up or chatting with the customer service department at your web provider, and they should be able to take care of it and fix it right up for you. Now let's talk about those other two fields. The fields that drive information on Google Images, they're specific to your particular picture. And unless you're trying to do some sort of e-commerce solution, you don't really even need to use those fields. But what the heck, they're there, let's make them work for us. So we'll scroll down here in our IPTC information in this particular dialog. And we will get down to the bottom, to the fields that I don't use very much at all, and we'll find a section. This is actually an array, not just one field, but it's an array of fields. And it says licensors, licensors. And we have three little dots. Now this field may turn up straight away in your dialogue in Photo Mechanic, or it might not show. It depends actually on whether or not you've customized the dialogue. If you've customized the dialogue, you're going to have to go and turn this field on, which I will show you how to do in just a moment. If we click the three little dots, the array opens, and we have all these subfields for this field. The two that we really care about are this one, the URL, the licensor URL. Same deal. We'll put, whoops, just two Ps will probably do it. Let's put Joe's URL in here. And we'll direct people to that same landing page, that licensing landing page. It'll do just fine. You don't have to send people to a different place or a place that's particular for this particular picture. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. And since Joe Photographer is the licensor, we'll put Joe Photographer's name in here. And out of our undying respect for Joe, I'll even capitalize it correctly. And you know what? Let's put some contact information because what the heck, it's not going to hurt. And we have the opportunity right there. Click OK, and that information is there. But we need to save it into our template. Now we can do that from this one at a time IPTC metadata dialog, or we can do it in the template dialog. It works exactly the same way, and the results are exactly the same. The templates are shared between the two dialogs. And well, yes, you can export a template by just hitting the Save button, and you can export the template out to an XMP template file. What most people do most of the time to save a template is they simply click the lightning bolt, which is the snapshot button in Photo Mechanic, and they go up to save, and they choose the template that they want to save, or they give it a name if they want to make a new one, and say, okay, fine save the template, and say yes. And we'll dismiss that. Yeah, I want to save the changes. And we will dismiss that dialog. And we'll jump back over here to our template editor. And we can scroll down in this dialog. In my case, I put it down here pretty near the bottom because I really never have to go here. But here we have the licensors array, and I have the button to open it up and I can add license information. And let's load the template that I just did. And we should actually see the information that actually exists in this template. So there we go, there it is. All right, good to go. So what if you don't see the licensors array 
in your interface. OK, fine. We'll close the template. We'll jump over to Photo Mechanics Preferences. We'll use the pull down to hop down to the Accessibility page. Yeah, I would have thought it would be on the IPTC page too, but hey, that's just the way it works. And we have here Customize. And we have one button for each of the two dialogues. This one is for the template editor. This one is for the one at a time editor. Now, in this case, we have to do this once for each editor. Templates are shared between the editors, but this is the actual configuration of the actual editor itself. And in this thing, you'll have a list of all the fields that appear or can appear in those dialogues. So we'll just have to scroll down through this list and we will have to find the licensors field or the licensors array. And we just make sure that it's checked both to be enabled and to be visible. I have a dialog that talks about using this dialog extensively. I will tell you one little detail that's really important from that that could mess you up. Don't disable any fields unless you really, really know what you're doing. Most photographers, most of the time, 99%, 99% of the time, want to leave all the fields enabled. If you disable a field, not only will Photo Mechanic not show it in the dialog and not let you write to it, it'll actually erase it if there's any information in that field. You probably don't care, but if you do care, you probably care a lot. After you have arranged this dialog to get the dialog in your interface to look the way you want it to look, it's got a snapshot button. So just go right ahead and save the snapshot. Do one and then do the other. And let's see, we know that it's on the left side as I have this dialog arranged. Let's see if we can find it. Here it is right here. Here is the licensors field. And yeah, it's only one row deep because it is only one row deep. And we just turned it on. And that's all we have to do. Same thing. After you get done configuring your dialog, go right ahead and save the snapshot and you'll be good to go. So I'll cancel back out of there. And that's basically it. That's as easy as it is to apply metadata to a whole bunch of photos in Photo Mechanic in one go. You'll get the benefit of those great Google features. Actually, you'll get the benefit of those great Google features at the first step. And in Photo Mechanic, you can configure the program to automatically put that information on every single picture you pull down from your camera's cards. So when I say it's zero work, it's literally zero work. I don't do it that way. And you probably don't want to do it that way either. It seems to me to sort of be cluttering things up to put my metadata on every single frame, including the ones that I discard or maybe don't work up or maybe don't publish. But that's all up to you. There's a million ways to use this program. It's really powerful. It's really fast. And you can do the socially conscious thing, which is also the best thing for you, without really breaking into much of a sweat at all. So. It's all around a pretty good deal. As always, jump in the comments down below, jump in the comments on my blog, or reach out in social media. If you need more information about Photo Mechanic, there's a playlist on this channel. There's a bunch of posts on the blog, so you should be able to find out what you need to know. And if you don't, there are those comments. Reach out, and I'll be really happy to help. As I record this, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so please, folks, be careful. Stay safe out there, and until next time, mind your metadata.